Amen. what it's showing there, Earth there, and this, and the red lines are gravitational forces that affect change. Carlos Ferrado, born in, I mean, born in Chile in 1909, in 1939, discovered this. He started talking about it. He discovered uh, different comets, planets, projected changes in Halley's comets. He projected giant earthquakes and tsunamis that came true two or three days ahead of time. He was a master of the physics of the universe. He said it will come 14 million kilometers from Earth, 8.6 million miles. Now, it will be traveling at 2,237 miles an hour. Eventually, everyone will see it, and it will be terrifying. It will cause volcanic induced quakes in Spain, Chile, and Sumatra. He said it will bring on Earth changes in people and the geology of the Earth will bring on famine. He used the word sustenance problems, guys. But um, then, let's move forward to 83, Washington Post. Other newspapers had it, too. It says a heavenly body possibly as large as the giant planet Jupiter and possibly so close to Earth that it would be part of this solar system has been found in the direction of the constellation Orion by an orbiting telescope aboard the U.S. Infrared Astronomical Satellite. So mysterious is the object that astronomers do not know if it's a planet, a comet, or a protostar that never got hot enough to become a star. And I want you to notice the names in here, Gary Newbauer and James Hawk. Now, um, it says the most fascinating explanation of this mysterious body, which is so cold it casts no light and has never been seen by optical telescopes on Earth or in space, is that it is a giant gaseous planet. Now, again, notice who these two guys are. They're not just some backyard astronomers. Newberger, honored American astronomer. It, he uh, pioneered infrared astronomy. Director of Palomar, guys, JPL, J.R. Hawk, designed instrumentation for the Spitzer Space Telescope, won the NASA Exceptional Scientific Achievement Medal in 84 and 2005. Tech guy behind the RAS and the Palomar Observatory. Now he teaches at, at Cornell in New York. They identified nine objects in the solar system. These are the plate numbers. These are the two guys. Here, I want you to pause this and look at your tilts of the different planets. Notice Saturn 2673, Earth 23.4. And they, they're watching this tilt, guys, because the further a planet tilts, the longer the seasons become, the more dramatic, the more problems you have. Earth is currently at 23.4. That's the tilt off zero. It varies from 22.1, you see that, to 24.5. Now, it says because the tilt changes the seasons as we know them, or tilt means more severe seasons, warmer summers, colder winters. Less tilt means less. Cooler summers, milder winters. It's a cooler summers that build up the uh, ice caps, things like that, guys. But this is a uh, this is the variation normal from 22.1, 24.5. Now there, there's a, a phenomenon called a geomagnetic jerk. And it's when instead of this slowly changing, something happens that, that there's a quick jerk in this, in that change. And it talks about right here, you can um, pause this. Now, in 2011, when something happened, they noticed a flare coming from that Tyler solar system in that Spanish chart. That's when the Japan quake hit. After that, look, guys, in the Tampa airport and airports in England had to repaint their north and south degree indicators on their airport runways. That is called a geomagnetic jerk. Now, they killed the funding for those two guys. Now, they got seven satellites starting back right after that in 73 where they started building them all the way up. Now they're headed that way. 
Now, guys, here's a breakdown of the math. Now, whatever it is, here's the math. Notice this is a left orange would be our Herculobus or whatever the object is. The sun's on the right. One AU is the distance between that blue ball, Earth, and the yellow ball, sun. They're saying that the gravitational pull in the math from this Herculobus object is about 8 to 9 AU. That means it could be twice as far from the sun as Saturn and affect Saturn. You understand what I'm saying? Saturn varies from 9 to 11 AU because it's an elongated orbit. Earth is 1 AU from the sun. So at, if at 16 AU from the sun, the math would say this would, could have effect on our outer solar system. You understand what I'm saying? But guys, um, these are the numbers and some of the information. We're going to keep an eye on it, uh, but I'm sure a lot of you know more about it than I do. But God, isn't it strange how they blocked these two scientists? Started sending satellites out there, checking on this. Quakes, seasons getting longer. And guys, they say that's a th that cycle of that tilt is around 3,600 years. 30, excuse me, 36,000 years. 3,600. I guess he's saying 36,000 years, but I thought it was 3,600. Okay, to continue. Now, uh, Mr. Ferrado says that every 13,000 years, this planet comes close enough to disrupt the planets in our solar system. That's the last ice age when the woolly mammoths were found frozen to death with flowers in their mouth in North America around the time of the Great Flood. Just a heads up, guys, just a research I'm sharing. Be safe. So, I guess they're slowly showing us that Nibiru does exist. They want to call it Herculobus now. But it's still Nibiru to me. And that uh, somehow it's over by Orion. Which makes sense why all the pyramids, everything points to Orion's belt. Huh. Alrighty then. So, when he hears Herculobus, I guess it's the same as Nibiru. Wormwood. Nemesis. But I guess now they're starting to come out and go public with it. How about that one? Live, this is one for the record. I'm Diane, and today is December 8th, 2013. Here are your news updates for today. I will be attaching a lot of videos. Okay, the Extinction Protocol 2012 and beyond. Indonesia's Mount Merapa Rapi erupts. Ejects, bless you, Max. Ejects 350 meters ash cloud. Kamchatka's Kolochevsky Volcano spews out six kilometers high ash cloud. I reported that one yesterday. Moving on. The watchers watching the world. Andronomid meteor outburst in progress. Heads up. Maybe you can see some meteors fly by. Comet I saw on mysteries continue. Space news from Electric Universe. Alrighty then. Newly discovered Comet Lovejoy visible by naked eye in Northern Hemisphere. Heads up! See if you can check it out. Alrighty then. Geomagnetic storming sparked by coronal hole high speed stream in progress. Alrighty then. Moving on. Breaking news, breakingnews.com. I get itchy sometimes. Right when I start with that blue light on me, when I start recording, it's weird. Then I feel like, well, the closer I get to the screen, I, start, I don't know what it's putting off here. All right. 
Moderate to heavy freezing rain moves across western Virginia into D.C. and Maryland. Heads up, coming out of the storm chaser. Uh, 4850. What else do we have? Okay, nothing of interest right now. I know that there's heavy storms going across the country right now. Please be safe and make sure you check on the elderly and people that don't have anyone else. If you know someone who's by themselves, make sure they're okay. Alrighty then. <laughs> Max is talking in the background now. Hey, he's on the comforter. He's hamming it up. Max. There he is. All right. And did mommy trim the hair on your face? No, oh, you know when he's wiping his mouth off all over the blankies. <laughs> all righty then. Go make your bed, Tippy. Go make, go, go make your bed. Go, go up. Tippy, up. Tippy, up. She don't want to go up right now. Go up, up. Go up, up. <laughs> All right. Make your bed. Energy News report reveals highest level of radioactive xenon 133 or is it xenon 133 to hit Canada after Fukushima over 6,000 more than government website claims. You don't like that report, Max? We'll do another one. Also today, Canadian officials estimated Fukushima cesium-137 released almost double Chernobyl. Based on most conservative and credible projections. He doesn't like that. You didn't like that information? He says no. He's shaking his head. Okay, moving on. See what else we got going on here. Any news? Fukushima, Japan. Record radiation level in underground water well near ocean at Fukushima. TEPCO. Rise in radiation readings is an obvious concern. <laughs> They're using concern again. 1.4 billion becquerels M3 of strontium beta emitters. Max, get off the get off the glass coffee table. Max, get down, please. Down. Thank you. And that's all there is for today from E and E News. I'm gonna attach some videos on that. Alrighty then. Yes, I'm in a tank top. I'm in Florida. Might be good for most people to get out of the stormage areas and move south get away from the west coast from the radiation go east and move south please be safe out there and I'm attaching something on Nibiru which is Herculobus now they're going to change the name of course or Wormwood in the Bible they're starting to Keep it out to everybody now. We already knew it was there. How about that one? Alrighty then. Take care. Be prepared for anything. Have plenty of water and food for you and your pets. And I'll see you again tomorrow on the flip side. 
Stay tuned. And be safe. And be prepared for anything. Japan's lawmakers approved a bill on Friday that gives the government authority to designate official information as special secrets. The law gives strict penalties for those who leak the information. NHK World's Tomoko Kamata has the details. Lawmakers with the ruling coalition used their majority in the upper house to cut off debate on the secrecy bill. Then they voted in favor of it and made it law. This law will enforce the security of the nation. It is our duty to fully explain its purpose to the people. It's regrettable that the ruling party is forced through the bill with their power of numbers. The law gives senior government officials authority to define information as special secrets. That would include material related to defense, diplomacy, counterintelligence, and counterterrorism. Public servants found guilty of leaking these secrets could be jailed for up to 10 years. Citizens who deliberately obtain this type of information could also face punishment. The law is closely related to Japan's new National Security Council. Prime Minister Shinzo Abe set up the body to streamline the analysis of information gathered by various ministries and foreign countries. Senior officials say the secrecy law is essential for convincing other governments that they can be trusted to share intelligence. However, some, including international human rights groups, writers, and scientists, are worried about the power the law gives Japanese leaders. Members of the country's largest lawyers group argue the legislation could allow government officials to classify information arbitrarily. Tsutomu Shimizu says it undermines the public's right to know. And the possibility of long prison terms will intimidate whistleblowers. Officials can't activate this law just by itself. They need to create detailed regulations, operations manuals and guidelines. We need to keep an eye on government officials so they don't undermine human rights. Prime Minister Abe has vowed to set up panels to oversee the decisions officials make under the secrecy law. And he says experts will draw up guidelines for what would constitute classified information. Critics say Abe was in too much of a hurry to pass the bill and lawmakers couldn't debate the details thoroughly. Japan has fallen back into fascism after 68 years. A senator yelled out, this is the way the reign of terror begins. Then other physically restrained him. The Empire of Japan surrendered on September 2nd, 1945. 68 years later, Japan has fallen right back into fascism. Despite large protests outside the Japanese Senate, compromised of more than 7,000 demonstrators, so outraged was opposition lawmaker Hirokaza Shiba in the committee meeting Thursday that he rose from his seat and shouted, this is the way the reign of terror begins. His fervor led to his fellow lawmakers having to physically restrain Shiba as tensions in the meeting reached fever pitch. The secrecy bill passed today, and here's what another Japanese senator had to say. The path that Japan is taking is the recreation of a fascist state. I strongly believe that this secrecy bill represents a planned coup d'etat by a group of politicians and bureaucrats. Just like the U.S., Japan is responding by banning journalism. The Guardian notes whistleblowers and journalists in Japan could soon find themselves facing long spells in prison for divulging and reporting state secrets, possibly including sensitive information about the Fukushima nuclear disaster. One editorial writer said it's a threat to democracy. It can be used to hide whatever the government wishes to keep away from public scrutiny. The justice minister refused to rule out police raids of newspapers suspected by breaking the law. 
Indeed, the number two government official said last week that protest equals terrorism. Washington, for its part, has long supported stronger secrecy laws in Japan. Abe plans to create Japan's version of the U.S. National Security Council. Following the developments is NHK World Senior Political Commentator Masayo Nakajima, and he joins us now in the studio for his analysis. Masayo, mm -hmm. so why did Prime Minister Abe push to establish the National Security Council at this time? Well, the NSC is supposed to help the government deal quickly with diplomatic and security challenges. For example, if a country were to threaten Japan, the NSC would, in principle, help the administration take more coordinated action. Prime Minister Abe tried to create a National Security Council when he was first in office, but his efforts failed. Now, with a strong majority, his Liberal Democratic Party and its coalition partner were able to get the bill passed. Mm -hmm. They argue the security environment in East Asia is becoming more severe. North Korea's missile and nuclear programs pose a threat to Japan. And China is becoming more active in the region. There are critics who have disagreed with uh, Abe for launching the National Security Council. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Well, some critics say the NSC will help the Abe administration strengthen security ties with the U.S. They worry this could put J Japan at risk of getting involved in a real conflict or war. Some say there should be certain measures for people to check what leaders talk about and decide in the council. The Abe administration responded by adopting a resolution allowing records of NSC meetings to be kept in a way that does not compromise national security. However, those records could be kept confidential under the secrecy bill the Prime Minister is trying to pass. If that's the case, it would take some time to check what's going on behind the scenes. How would the opposition lawmakers change things if they could? Well, some opposition lawmakers say that the NSC may not work effectively without an enhanced intelligence and information gathering service. And they propose setting up a special agency, much like the CIA in the U.S. and MI6 in Britain. But members of the Abe administration have ruled that out for now. Or they'll continue to depend on current ministries and agencies as sources. The Defense and Foreign Ministries and the National Police Agency mainly. The Prime Minister appears to be focusing, for now, on coordinating intelligence and policies. Masayo, thanks as always. U.S. President Barack Obama has indicated that the U.S. may allow Iran to enrich uranium for peaceful purposes with strict monitoring and constraints. It is in America's national security interests, not just Israel's national security interests or the region's national security interests, to prevent Iran from getting a nuclear weapon. Obama spoke at a forum on U.S.-Israel relations in Washington. He talked about the interim deal reached last month between Iran and six world powers. They agreed to relax some of the sanctions on Iran in return for curbing its nuclear program. We can envision an end state that gives us an assurance that even if they have some modest enrichment capability, it is so constrained and the inspections are so intrusive that they, as a practical matter, do not have breakout capacity. Observers say Obama suggested that the U.S. may allow Iran to enrich uranium in the future if it proves to be for peaceful use. Israel had criticized the nuclear deal strongly, saying it's only weakening the pressure on Iran. Inspectors from the International Atomic Energy Agency are visiting a heavy water reactor under construction in Iran. The facility is at the center of concerns that Iran is trying to obtain weapons-grade plutonium. Iran's Atomic Energy Agency says the inspectors began their visit to the site in the city of Iraq on Sunday. They're believed to be interviewing officials at the facility. A heavy water reactor makes it easier to extract plutonium from spent nuclear fuel. Iran is suspected of aiming to produce plutonium for weapons use. But Iranian officials say they want to produce radioactive materials for the medical treatment of cancer and other diseases. 
The visit is the first inspection since Iran and the nuclear watchdog agreed in November on a new framework for cooperation. The country had denied the IAEA access to the reactor for more than two years. Iran also agreed with six world powers last month to suspend the construction of the reactor as part of the first step to be carried out over the next six months. Six men suspected of stealing a truck carrying a load of radioactive material in Mexico are in hospital for possible radiation exposure. A group of gunmen hijacked a truck outside Mexico City on Monday. It was carrying a Cobalt-60, a radioactive substance used for medical applications. Police later found the radioactive substance about 60 kilometers away. The thieves had removed the radioactive material from its protective case. Health officials say six men aged between 16 and 38 visited the hospital between late Thursday and early Friday under police guard. They were tested for signs of radiation exposure. The officials say one of them was treated after complaining of a headache and nausea. Police say they detained the six men based on the truck driver's statement. The authorities plan to investigate the case further after the men have finished undergoing medical tests. A symposium has been held to commemorate the 50th anniversary of a landmark ruling on the U.S. atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. The ruling found that the attacks were in breach of international law. The Tokyo District Court ruling in December 1963 said the attacks inflicted unnecessary pain on many civilians. About 80 people, including atomic bomb survivors and legal experts, attended Sunday's event in Tokyo. An atomic bomb survivor said Japan should change its policy of depending on the U.S. nuclear umbrella and do more to abolish nuclear weapons. I believe that no one would think of using nuclear weapons if we share information on their dangers. The Japanese government has distanced itself from movements that try to ban nuclear arms. But in October, the government signed a UN statement for the first time that says they should not be used under any circumstances.
Look at what your pen is going through.